Howdy folks, how we doing? It is Saturday, it is wonderful, it's pretty rainy here in Ohio, um, pretty gloomy, but that's okay. We're in the springtime now, it's bound to happen. Um, ooh, a few things, I wanna show my shirt, because I have my, another cute shirt, it's my primal shirt, this show is wonderful. Oh, hey Tech, how's it going? I'm so also so glad it's the weekend, but this is my primal shirt. I love this show. It's a very violent show, but it's a really great one. I think it's on HBO. Um, it's the same guy that made Clone Wars. He also made Samurai Jack, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, let's see. So today you'll notice that I deleted Fisherman Tully's phone number because the other day I went on to get Lucius a haircut and he gave us a water stone, which is great. Um, so there's that. I'm also gonna give this HP up to Lucius right now. Wonderful, give him a little, little vitamin love. And we'll get this haircut right now. So it has been a wonderful Saturday so far. Um, last night, ooh, that is the lady that sells you the bitter herbs. I'll just show you what that looks like. Hello, dear. I sell inexpensive herbal medicine. They're good, but a trifle bitter. I'm not good at accents. Um, your Pokemon may not like them. Hee 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 hee. So, all of these do what their, like, potion counterparts do. They're just cheaper. Like, this is basically a super potion, but it's only $500 instead of $700. Um, alright, so let's get this haircut. Welcome! Ah, the better of the two haircut brothers. Um, she's actually Hungarian. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, how's it going, Aaron? Alright. Let's see. Let's do give Lucius the haircut. Perfect. Lucius looks happy. Um, so one of the reasons why I kind of put off fighting Jasmine the other day is that we're not always going to have the opportunity to give Lucius a haircut because there's going to be some story stuff that kind of limits that for us. Um, but let's actually pop over here. I wanted to show you all this as well. Um, excuse me, sir. Uh, we have this Team Rocket guy who wasn't here before. Stay out of the way! Beat it! And I'm like, wow, you're so mean. So we have our friendship checker lady. If you remember last time, she said that Lucius looked cute and nothing more. So now she says, it's friendly toward you. It looks sort of happy. Um, so if I look up my handy dandy friendship checker thing, I can't type. Um, ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. So according to that, our friendship is between 150 and 199 now. So, if you recall, we need to get to 220 friendship points, essentially, to make Lucius evolve. So, Lucius will not be evolving today, and that's okay. Because, like I said, that goal um, level is going to be level 36, and we still have quite a, quite a ways left to go there. The reason we want to do that is because um, at level 36... Uh, when Lucius becomes an Espeon, it will learn the move Psybeam. And it'll be really, really helpful to have that psychic move on Lucius. But if we don't do that, we'll miss the move. Um, so now what I want to do... I think the first thing I want to do is I want to make this right from the other day. Because we... Popped over here to Union Cave, and I was showing you kind of some of the stuff that you can do in Union Cave. Especially since you can't get Psychic in Johto, you are absolutely right. Psychic is the most powerful um, Psychic move, and it's a great move for Espeon, and there is a TM for it, but you can't get it in Johto. I'm looking for my Super Repels. Did I pass them? I sure did. Alright, so... If you recall, we were here in Union Cave and we were going to pop over here because last time I wanted to catch one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, a Smeargle. But I couldn't do it 
because it was nighttime and we fought this guy, he has a giraffe rig, we did the puzzle in here. But now we can finally catch this Smeargle. I really want to show this to you guys because this patch of grass, again, is the only spot in the game you can catch it in two. And it's the only spot, sorry, my repel has to wear off. I was a bit overzealous there. There we go. Um, it's the only place you can catch in a two, and it's the only place you can catch a smear gold. Um, and the reason we couldn't get it last time was because at night, in crystal only, in gold and silver, you can catch smear gold any time of the day, but in crystal, you can't catch a smear gold at night, which is just silly. Um, all right, and we are going to find one. I am determined to find one. Come on now. And I was saying, Smeargle can only learn the move Sketch. So once we find one, um, we are going to... It'll probably use that move against us. And I think um, last time we checked, it's a 10% encounter. So it's pretty rare. Um, not as rare as Margo was to find here. Uh, Margo was a 1% encounter in uh, old dark cave. But what I will do is I will turn down my sound so you don't get all that nasty, uh, all that nasty noise. Because sometimes when I use speed up, it can, uh, it's not a huge deal because I don't use it that much. But when I'm using it like a ton, it can just make the sound on the stream sound really gross. Um, so, as you can see, we are just finding Natus, or Natus. I kind of, ooh, wow, couldn't escape that one. Um, I've kind of said it, there he is! My boy! My boy! So, usually what you want to do when you catch a Smeargle is you want to catch it at level 20, because for some reason, it learns Sketch every 10 levels. It learns Sketch at, like, 1, 11, 21, 31, 41. Um, and so on. So, here's what we're gonna do. Whatever we use, Smeargle is going to sketch that. And that's gonna be the one move that it has. Um, because right now, Smeargle only has one move, and it's sketch. And it only has one power point, which is really interesting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use Rage. So, Painty Boy, that's right. So as you can see, ooh, that was a critical hit. He is going to sketch our move. So now, Smeargle has permanently learned the move's uh, Rage. Which, Rage isn't a great move, but on a Smeargle, who's a normal type, Rage is a pretty solid, like, starting move for it to have. Um, Smeargle's a very, like... Um, so now the only move it can use is Rage. Um, and, like, let's say if Smeargle went first, or if uh, Rage missed or something, it would try to sketch, and it would fail, and then it would just use Struggle, because it doesn't have any power points left. Um, so, catching a Smeargle is very interesting. Um, hold on, let's just throw a ball. Let's see, let's throw a great ball at you, Smeargle. I don't really know how, I don't remember how hard Smeargle is to catch. Um. Hey! First ball magic! First ball magic. Um. Awesome. If anyone's got a Smeargle name, just drop it. Hey, Mom, how's it going? If anyone's got a Smeargle nickname, drop it in. Um, the color of the mysterious fluid secreted from its tail is predetermined for each Smeargle. Oh, that's cool. Um, so let's see, give a nickname to Smeargle? Of course. I'm so glad I was able to show this Pokemon to you guys. It's one of my favorites. Van Gogh, love it. Love it. Uh, where's the V? There you are. Van Gogh. G-H. Yes. Perfect. Um, okay, awesome. That was so great. Uh, let's see here. I'm just gonna go ahead and fly out of here. Actually, I remember the other day, um, we were in here, and I didn't show you what was below here, because I wanted to show you Smeargle. So we'll go over to this area. And you kind of have to hop down that ledge to get to here. Oh, shoot. Interesting. 
Oh, so this opened, so I must have had... Oh, what does it say? Sorry. Patterns appeared on the walls. Water. So, apparently for this wall to break like that, you probably either need to have, like, a water Pokemon in your party, or even a water stone in your bag. Um, I don't really remember, but those walls, if you remember, we were able to open one up, I think, by using Flash. Um, or something like that. I think there's one you can open up by using Dig. It's the stone. Thank you, Tech. Um, so that's actually really rare to do, so let's uh, see what we got here. Ooh, a mystery berry! We have one of those in our bag already. It heals power points. Um, it's a very good, very useful item. Ooh, a mystic water! So now we have two mystic waters. It's very cool. Oh, a star piece! Um, that is a lot like a nugget. It is something that you can sell for a high price. Um, let's see here. Can I make any of our Pokemon hold something? I'm gonna give this soft sand to Pogo for now, just so we have some room. Great. Y'all have to do a little bit of item management once we get here. So that will drop us down into the unknown room. Let's... Oh, actually it won't. Actually it won't. So what is this one? Ah, uh, this is the Almanite puzzle. This one's a little tougher to do. Let's do it. Um... Because it looks weird in this one for some reason. I don't know why, but it just looks a little odd to me. No. I'll just put that there for now. Because I think I can get the corners. So, if you recall in our yellow playthrough, we got Kabuto as our fossil, but this is Almanite. And it is the other fossil that you can get. Um, yeah, the edges are wavy. Yeah, it's hard to find the corners. You're exactly right about that. Let's see. Pretty sure I'm close here. <laughs> All right, that's looking not too terrible. Do do do. Okay. There, that looks right. Yes, I think. There. Okay, I think I'm getting it, gang. Absolutely, this is some of the best spooky music. Nailed it! So I couldn't decide which thing I wanted to show you guys. Um. Yeah, that's one of the tougher puzzles, the Almanite puzzle. Um, oh yes, I think I used a first try. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, uh, guys, this is gonna bug me. I have to show this to you. <laughs> so we're, oh, I can pop into Kurt. He has a ball of ours. There we go, we got a friend ball. Love to see it. Um, I'm gonna pop over here because I really want to show you what that room says because I kind of had to choose between the puzzle and the the room because whenever you go to one of those special item rooms like we got the star piece and the what you would call it the star dust the stuff that you can sell um sorry I'm bonking everywhere there we go let's hop back down here when you go through that little area in the floor there's like a really cool unknown thing so what does this say they possess great insight and What does that say? Oh, and refuse the outside world. They possess great insight and refuse the outside world. Such a cool, like, mysterious message. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean, but it's freaking awesome. Ugh. Okay. That's why I wanted to show that to you guys. 
Um, oh, we're all the way down here. So yeah, we've un unlocked a few other unknowns. This is the unknown H. Um, let's see. Let's just pop back up here. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to use another repel so we don't run into a million unknowns. Um, so yeah, there's Smeargle, there's the Almanite puzzle, and there's that special room. There are a few more special rooms that you can do. I don't know if we'll do all of them in our playthrough, but I'm happy that I was able to show off some of those to you guys. So now, as we get going, we are going to try to fight our next gym. I don't know how we're going to do. We should do decently well. Um, let me do a little item management here. I'm going to have to deposit a few things. We'll deposit our water stone. We're going to do great. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, we'll d deposit our mystic water because we already have one of those. Um, yeah, we'll just do that for now. And we will pop over here. Um, so the pretty red sand, sell high. Yeah, so the stardust and the star piece are things that basically exist to be sold. And this is a hunk of red gem that it sells very high. Love to see it. Lovely. And I think up here, I'm going to go ahead and sell these poison cured berries. They only sell for $10 for both of them, but I'll hold on to the bitter berries. Those could come more in handy. And we already have a ton of full heals, so we're going to be all right without those berries. Um, item management is way better in the Generation 2 games than it is Generation 1, because you're just always freaking getting rid of your... TMs and depositing things, and, but here with our different different pockets of our bag, we're doing a lot better. Um, so I'm just going to try to go in here. We're not fully healed. Jasmine's Gym, there isn't much to it, because, and if you'll notice, there's a bunch of rocks around. They kind of don't have a puzzle or trainers in Jasmine's Gym, because you kind of have to do all of that lighthouse stuff, and that's kind of like her or gym puzzle, so to speak. Um, but we're just kind of going to kind of go in here blind. The reason that she has a lot of these rocks is that canonically she used to be a rock type gym leader. Uh, but then like when her type was discovered, the steel type, um, she switched to steel and you, and that's going to bear out in her team. She has a really cool kind of squad. Thank you for your help with the lighthouse, but this is different. Ooh. <laughs> Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Jasmine, a gym leader. I use the steel type. Do you know about the steel type? It's a type that was only recently discovered. Um, may I begin? Um, so this is Jasmine. She is awesome. I love her. One of my favorite gym leaders of all time. Her team as a whole isn't great, but she does have a very iconic ace Pokemon. So, Lucius is not going to be able to do a ton for us here. I just wanted to get him into the fight to get him some gym leader experience. So kawaii. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, for those of you that don't know, kawaii in Japanese is cute. I know a few words. Um, this Magamite is going to annihilate our Pogo. Thank you for your sacrifice, Pogo. Because Thunderbolt is probably the best um, Electric-type move. It's not the strongest, but I would call it the best. So now, what I'm going to do with the Magnemites here is we're going to go out to Sinaiquil. Now, Sinaiquil's Ember is super effective, but Mud Slap is also double super effective because Magnemite is a Ground and Steel-type, and I'm hoping its next move will miss now. Oh, baby! Love to see it. I think our Ember should knock it out now. Because we have the Charcoal on Sinaiquil. Um, perfect. That went exactly how I wanted it to go. That was awesome. 
uh, because it really likes to paralyze you and then use Thunderbolt. That's pretty much what both of her Magnemites are gonna do. She has two, but here she has her iconic ace, her Steelix. And one thing that Steelix is probably gonna try to do, look at this. Mmm, so cool. And a really good little bit of lore, she used to be a Rock-type gym leader, but now that Onyx can evolve into Steelix, she became a Steel-type gym leader. Which is a good synergy, baby. Synergy. It's great. Never get tired of that cry. Do me either. It is awesome. I love Steelix. Great Pokemon. I love Steel-type Pokemon a lot. Um, so, we have Lapras here. One Surf might knock it out, but we'll see. Because the Steelix might try to use Sunny Day, which it knows. And Sunny Day is a lot like Rain Dance, but, you know, instead of increasing Water-type moves, it decreases Water-type moves. And it survived... Ah, uh, no, it just went straight for a Screech. So we should be able to knock this out pretty pretty quickly. Um, okay, she has her Hyper Potion, and she's going to kind of try to stall a little bit here. But what, a lot of times when the AI trainers get in this, like, healing loop, if they have a lot of potions, like one of the boss trainers, it doesn't... Ooh, a high roll. It doesn't really matter that they heal their whole HP because we can just bring it all back down again. And then Pampras knocks it out with Surf. Again, Jasmine can be way harder, especially if you try to fight her early. Um, but we had great... Oh, it does increase Fire-type power. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I didn't mention that. Um, so Sunny Day weakens Water-type moves, increases Fire-type power, and similar to how you can't miss with Thunder in the rain... Um, you can use the move Solar Beam in the sun without charging up, which is, mwah, so great. Um, Lapras is such a strong Pokemon in this game. Like, it can destroy everything. <laughs> um, so maybe, maybe I shouldn't have grabbed it. Ooh, Parish Song. This is a cool new move. I, I'm gonna teach it. We don't, we don't really use Confuse Ray. I like to have Sing. Um, Parish Song is a move that when you use it, both Pokemon are guaranteed to faint in three turns. Um, you can kind of get rid of the curse, so to speak, if you swap out, but it's a really cool move, and it might might come in handy for some of the later fights in the game. We'll see. So for this other Magnemite, I'm going to see if Sinaiquil can pull that same magic that he did with the first one, and that should work just fine if, if so. All right, let's get that miss. Come on now. Give me that miss. Guys, easy fight. Easy fight. Easy game. That'll do it, kids. Jasmine can be a lot tougher, especially because those Magnemites will try to paralyze your whole team. We had some good matchups, I will say. She didn't even hit us, now that I think about it. <laughs> and she's my favorite. I love her. Um, let's see. You are a better trainer than me in both skill and kindness. In accordance with league rules, I confer upon you this badge. I love that line. Gosh. The Mineral Badge, which is another cool... Poor Pogo. Oh, yeah, Porgo did faint. I forgot about that. Pogo. Never forgotten. Uh, let's see. Please take this, too. So, TM23... <laughs> I know. Forgetting his sacrifice. I'm a terrible person. Um, uh, this TM is for the move Iron Tail, which is not a signature move of Steelix, but it's, you know, her Steelix is very well known for using it. It didn't use it against us in that fight. Um, I don't know how to say this, but good luck. She's so sweet. Kawaii. All right. So now, what's something that's going to happen is we are going to pop out of here and we're going to get a call. Professor Elm, SCG, how are things going? I call because something weird is happening with the radio broadcast. That sounds familiar. They were talking about Team Rocket. SCG, do you know anything about it? I think I do, Professor. Maybe Team Rocket has returned. No, that just can't be true. Sorry to bug you. Take care. Um, so now, guys, we are going to get into the Team Rocket section of this game. I actually don't have to go down there. Uh... 
one great thing about this is you can still fly on a fainted Pokemon. Um, so, we are going to heal here. And then I'll show you kind of what's going down. So there's something weird going on with the radio broadcast. As you can see, this is usually how we get to the underground, but this rocket is blocking it now. And he says something crazy like, Pokemon, they're nothing more for tools than for making money. <laughs> what a bozo. So we have the radio tower here. And what has happened, once we step in, you'll know... That music is downright dastardly. Um, Team Rocket has taken over the radio tower. They've kind of taken over Goldenrod City. Which is pretty similar to what happens in... Uh, ba -ba -ba, Red, Blue, and Yellow. They kind of take over the big area of the main city of the region. Um, and I think... I think we still we still can get to the underground where the Haircut Brothers are through here, but I'm pretty sure when Team Rocket is present in Goldenrod, they are kind of like chased out. Um, I might be wrong about that, but that's why I kind of wanted to put off fighting Jasmine. So I think for the rest of our stream time today, we are going to focus in on uh, the Rocket section. I don't know if we'll get finished with it today. But we are going to try to drive out some of these some of these grunts. We've finally taken over the radio tower. Now everyone will get to experience the true terror of Team Rocket. We'll show you how scary we are. This might be the best, just like regular evil team music in the series. I don't know if that's true. Any of any of you big fans out there, give me your give me your favorite uh, evil team music in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, uh, oh oh no problem. I do do vocals for my band. Um, is what Tech was just asking. Um, oh, Raticate knows Hyperfang, so I'm gonna get out of here with Lucius. That could be a strong move. But. Um, yes, uh, Tech was just asking about Silver Cave Man, what I have above me. Um, it is my kind of like rock metal project. I do, at this point, I play the guitar, I program the drums, I play the bass, and I sing. I pretty much do everything myself at this point. Um, when I started the project around like 2017, 2018, I had some guys, I had, um, a couple guys play drums on some of my EPs, um, and they were awesome. Love those guys. Really good, talented guys. But I've since, um, since I came back to Ohio, and he shreds live. Thank you, Mom. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, so right now, the, the project is just me. Um, I've kind of had less time to devote to it, at least, like, as a full live entity. But I still try to always write, and I'm trying to produce on my own. Rock hands! <sighs> um, sorry, it's my tissue. Let's see. I'm just going to stay in. I think it's another rat gate. But, yeah, I'm really focusing on just uh, writing and releasing music. Um, and I have, again, I've been slowly plugging away on my latest release. Um, I'm working on remixing something that I have released before, and then um, another two-song EP. Um, once I get closer toward the summer and toward the end of the school year, I'll probably be ready to release it, um, which I'm really, really excited about. It's been a long time coming. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Tank. Your voice is so great and you riff hard. I highly suggest anyone listen to it. That is really, really nice. Um, and again, there is a Pokemon cover that I have done that I really, really like. Um, and that is one that I actually did with, with a producer. I didn't produce that one myself. But uh, it's called Red. Um, and we'll, we'll experience that track later in our Pokemon Crystal journey here. Um, and it's just an instrumental. But yeah, I do, I do sing everything and... Um, I really, really appreciate that. I, uh, you know, I, I studied theater in school. I, um, was a pro actor for a while. 
I'm still I'm still open to doing acting stuff. I'm I'm just not uh, not as actively searching it out, you know. Um, but uh, but yeah, I did a lot of musicals um, w uh, during my time when I lived in Los Angeles, and I was a part of another project as well. Um, it was called Dusk. And we actually had, we had a Kingdom Hearts cover actually do really well online. Um, if you're familiar with that game, the opening song of Kingdom Hearts 2 is called Sanctuary. It's one of my favorite songs ever. And with my old band, Dusk, we covered that song. And uh, I'm really, I'm really proud of that one. It went really well. Um, let's get Lucius out of there. We'll start with Margo. Um, oh, you were a theater nerd. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, I never made it big either. <laughs> I, I was, I was able to work professionally in some movies and, um, in some musicals, but it's, it was very hard to, very hard to maintain. And it was a very tough, very tough lifestyle. Very tough lifestyle. Um, cause you know, I know, I knew s some people just in my experiences that were far more successful than I. Um, they, they could have some, some rough goes as well, so it was good. Um, I'm happy to have done it, and again, some movies still shoot in Ohio, and I audition here and there for the movies that come through, so I'm hoping I can get on a, a couple more movies in my, um, in my little side career, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Just kind of letting life come to me, you know? But... But yeah, Sil Silver Cave Band is, uh, well, the band is just called Silver Cave, like the handles are called Silver Cave Band, like on X slash Twitter and Instagram, stuff like that, TikTok. But uh, it's a huge passion project of mine, and one that I'll continue to do um, releases for in the coming years. But thank you for talking about that. I appreciate that a lot. Um, let's see. Oh, one other thing that was today that I was really excited to do. In um, the, I live in the Columbus area, and they have a card show there um, that they have at these fairgrounds. And I, uh, <laughs> one of the reasons we're playing Pokemon, I collect cards as well. And I went to the card show, and it was so awesome. I had such a fun time um, trading some stuff, buying some stuff. Um, it was lovely. You will def check out the tunes. Thank you. That's really sweet. Um, but uh, let me get Lucius some action here. I can probably get to level 20. Um, you've got some valuable ones. Awesome. I do, too. I don't have anything, like, crazy. Um, but I have, I have a couple, I have a couple good ones, a couple hundred bucks, N no, like, crazy, like, thousands of dollars or anything like that. Um, and I have some, I have some rare packs as well. Um, ma maybe not rare packs, but valuable, like, old vintage packs that I value a lot. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I like collecting, I like to have fun with it. Um, and I sell some stuff too. Let's see. But, uh, yeah, I was able to go to the card show today, and it was super fun. Um, just seeing some other people that like to collect as well. And I picked up a few things. It was great. Uh, let's see. Don't confuse me. Um, but, yeah, it was a great time. It was super, super crowded. Um, a lot of people were there. And I was able to really get involved in the little collector community, which I enjoyed greatly. And they have that, they have that here every, I don't know, every couple of months or so. And I always try to, I always try to pop over there. Um, let's see. So we're working our way through our grunts here. We are going to start with Margo. Um, one good thing about this is as you get through the Team Rocket, ooh, this is cool. Three years ago, Team Rocket was forced to disband, but we're making a comeback here. Um... One of the good things here is you can always kind of like pop back to the Pokemon Center and then 
start going. You don't have to go all the way through. If there's some, like, if you want to add like, I don't know, a little challenge for yourself or something, you always can, and you can just try to go like straight through the rocket hideout without uh, going to the Pokemon Center. But uh, this ain't no challenge run. We're having fun here, gang. We're having fun here. Ah, let's see, Muck. So Muck is the evolved form of Grimer. We'll do some Nyquil. Margo can always come in here and clean up. Um, Muck is a really cool Pokemon. It's very simple, obviously. It's just a bigger pile of sludge. But, um... Oh, it's just gonna use Harden. Um... But it has some really good strategic, strategic things it can use. It can use Minimize to raise its evasiveness. It can use like Harden or Acid Armor to raise, raise its defense. It can be very trolly. It's very bulky, as you can see. It's taking a few hits to take down. Hmm. It's a great burn. Yeah. But it looks like uh, the one that this lowly Rocket Grunt has isn't going to be too good. It just knows Pound, which is a very weak move for this point in the game. I'm actually kind of surprised it only knows Pound. Let's see. So, Tech, you have some valuable ones. Any? Do you like to collect the modern stuff? Do you like to collect the vintage stuff? Also, if you're watching this after the fact, if you collect Pokemon cards, what do you collect? Um, um, I'm also into, like, vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, I really loved playing the card game back in the day. I don't know how it's played now. Because <laughs> um, I know it's gotten way more complicated, but uh, as well as collecting Pokemon stuff, I will also collect, like, old-school Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Um, like, original run of the show type of stuff. <laughs> it feels great ordering Pokemon to commit crimes. Ugh! I just love committing crimes, love animal abuse. It's great. Ah, uh, yes, wheezing. Wheezing is always annoying because wheezing can explode, and that is something we don't want to see. Don't want to see, because it'll just kill you. And I just went to the Pokemon Center. It's very annoying. Um, I feel lousy over losing. Um, okay, I'm just gonna use a revive, because I'm not walking back right now. We just got back. Come on. Um, so some of these, like we saw in the Sylph Company in Pokemon Yellow, um, who are you, unknown child? I'm here to save the day, man. I'm the child that's here to save the day. Um, no, Margo! I know. No, Margo. No, Margo. Um, this is not a great matchup for me, but you love to see the critical hit. They are just abusing Margo. How are you abusing my girl? There we go. Good work. She powered through. Um, so I will probably go back to the Pokemon Center at some point. Okay, so for Magnemites, we are just going to go into our big guns. I'll just let Sinaiqua knock these out with Ember. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Slamming. That's right. Um, lost my train of thought, gang. It's alright. Oh, what I was saying is, as we saw in the Sylph Company in Pokemon Yellow, there are scientists as well that, like, work with Team Rocket and do, like, nefarious experiments and whatnot. Um, Titch, I took you too lightly. You sure did, bro. You sure did. This lady is just like, um, oh, he's locked himself in, but the director can open it. He's up on the fifth floor. Ooh, okay, let's save the director. Um, okay. Oh, yes, because one thing that you can't do is you can't get through here yet. And that's what she's talking about. He's locked himself in. So to, to order to beat the boss, we need to get up through here. Um, let's save just in case something horrible happens to Lucius, which we hate to see. I'm giving strict orders to crush anyone who challenges Team Rocket. Well, guess what? You're not going to crush me, bro. Um, I also just realized 
what might be a good stopping point for us today. Ugh, again, um, coughing is one of those Pokemon that can explode slash poison, so I don't really want to risk Lucius here, because Pokemon exploding can be the most annoying thing because it knocks itself out, but it also knocks you out, so nothing gains experience, which I hate. I hate very much. Um, we'll go into Pampras here, because sometimes Grimer likes to raise that defense, regular defense. Oh, gosh, Pampras. Pampras and Margo are the two unstoppable juggernauts of the squad. Yeah, I believe Rupert's Rock Smash was destroying some of these... Ratatas. Um, but yeah, I was talking about the card show. A lot of my favorite stuff is from the kind of gold, silver, and crystal era. So back in the days of collecting Pokemon cards, those were like the Neo sets. There was Neo Genesis, Neo Discovery, Neo Revelation, and Neo Destiny. Um, and some of the most valuable set cards in the hobby are from some of those sets. Like the Shining cards, for example, from Neo Revelation and Neo Discovery are like hugely valuable, hugely popular. Um, I actually have a few Shining cards that I got when I was a kid, um, but I had them graded through PSA. They got like an eight. They both got like eights, which is pretty good. Scales out of 10. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, also, when I was young, there's a really great Lugia card that is in Neo Genesis. And as a kid, I actually got two of them. But, you know, as a kid, you don't take as great care of them as you could have. So I got those graded as well. They both got sixes, but they will, are so precious to me. My two Lugias, I will never, ever get rid of. They are very valuable to me. Um, so as you can, uh, as I've said, you you super glued your first edition Hollow Charizard to the wall when you were seven. That's crazy tech. <laughs> that is crazy. For those of you that don't know. Um, the first edition Hollow Charizard from like the original base set, that is like the card that you can get from a pack in Pokemon. And if you have like an <laughs> don't gotta tell you that, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um But if uh if you get that in like a perfect ten condition, um oh I mean you were seven! What are you gonna do? That's just what you did. And that's why they're so rare now, is because the people who value them so much now, they got them when they were children. And they didn't know how to take care of stuff. Um, but uh, a first edition Charizard in perfect 10 condition right now sells for about like... Um, kids glued them to their walls, it's right. It sells for somewhere about, and I don't mean to make you feel bad tech, Somewhere around like $200,000. If it's in perfect condition, which is very unlikely, honestly. Even if you get it straight from a pack, you never touched it. it it's like never been touched by human hands, basically. It can still not be a perfect 10. Um, so it's very, very rare. Um, I know kind of like during the height of everything, I think Logan Paul bought one for like a million dollars or something. Um, and I, I think he wore it out in one of his boxing matches, which is which is funny. Um, so we have this scientist here, and next we're gonna have our first like little mini boss of the Team Rocket section here. Uh, I'm gonna try to fight this Porygon. Porygon has these conversion moves where it changes its type. Um, I don't really know what they do, honestly. It just changed to the Steel type, so we're gonna bring in Rupert and hit it with some Fighting type moves. Lucius doesn't have a good move to really hit a Steel type Pokemon. But Porygon is a cool Pokemon. It's like a digital, kind of like man-made Pokemon, 
kind of canonically. And it can do things like change its type. It, it has a lot of cool uh, special attacks that it can use. Um, it also had the move Try Attack. Okay, so conversion, it converted back to the normal type. So the Rock Smash is still going to be super effective here. Knock it out. Great worldwide controversies, that's actually interesting. Um, Porygon actually evolves in this game. In the original, in the original games, it did not. Um, if you trade it with an item called the Upgrade, it will evolve, which is really cool. I like that a lot. Um, but what Tech's talking about, uh, worldwide controversies, I'm, while I scoot back to the Pokemon Center here to heal Tech and the gang. Not Tech, sorry. <laughs> Sonicro and the gang. Um, there was actually an episode of the original Pokemon anime that they aired in Japan that ended up getting banned, and the North American audience never saw it because it had it was an episode with that featured Porygon and there was kind of like a strobe light effect and there were a lot of kids in Japan that got seizures from it so that's one of like the famous band Pokemon episodes um, okay so here we are getting into um, now you have to name one after me. You know what? I think I will. I think I will. Our last, uh, our last Pokemon that we add to the squad is gonna be named Tech. Um, I'm gonna write that down. Um, let's see. You've been in integral to our journey. Um, so we're gonna save here, and we have our first little thing. Ah, oh, it's the director! You! You came to rescue me! Oh no! Is that what you were expecting? Wrong! I'm an imposter! I pretended to be the real thing! How rude! To prepare for our takeover. Do you want to know where we hid the real director? Sure, I'll tell you, but only if you can beat me. Hell yeah! You're right, dude! Um... So... This is the Rocket Executive here. Um, there are a few Rocket Executives that we have fought throughout our time. And this guy just has a ton of coughing and a ton of wheezing. And he can be very annoying because he can explode and he can poison a lot of our Pokemon. Again, I'm probably going to sacrifice Pogo here uh, just to let Lucius get in on the action. Um, and we have Pampras and Margo to really lean on. But I'm going to try to let Sinaiquil get some get some experience here. Ah, yes, we're actually only one, like, one level and change away from, okay, great, from getting our next fire-type move, which is something that we really need <laughs> on Sinaiquil. Um, let's see here. About to use coffee. Um, we're actually going to swap out, because when you get that um, whatchamacallit, accuracy drop. You want to swap out. So you can get rid of it. And I'm just checking something really quick, gang. Okay. We get it. I would love to see that flinch. Those headbutt flinches are wonderful. And yes, Sludge was actually the most powerful poison-type move in Generation 1. Um, but in this game... And it's still pretty good now, which is in all of these, uh, whatchamacallits, coughings know it, and they can poison you. But in this game, as we saw in last stream, we were able to pick up the TM for Sludge Bomb, which is now the most powerful poison type move. Nice critical hit for Margo. Let's see how far she can go. I think she can get to level 30. Um, I will swap out to our more powerful Pampras for his more powerful Weezing. Mm -hmm. All right. Doodle -de -de, doodle -de -de. Wonderful. Don't explode. Okay, great. <laughs> That's why I'm really skittish about actually using Lucius in this fight. Um, because, again, if you recall, um, if you let your Pokemon faint in battle, it can lower their friendship. And we cannot afford to lose... <laughs> Poor cancerous tumor Pokemon. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, 
Weezing is a very miserable looking Pokemon. And when it evolves, it just kind of mutates further. Um, but uh, Weezing actually does get a really cool form in the Sword and Shield games. It gets a regional form um, to where it is a poison and fairy type. Um, and, you know, steel and the, the steel and dark types were added here in Generation 2. Um, but the fairy type was not added until Generation uh, 6. Um, okay, so Screech will probably be a pretty useful move for our um, Dunsparce here. I'm going to get rid of Defense Curl for now. Um, I was maybe going to use that for a com combo attack, but uh, I feel good using Screech. Um, let's see. For this last coughing, we'll let Rupert Grunt take it. This should work out nicely. Um... Yeah, our squad is pretty mighty at this point in the game. Um, we fought a lot of kind of like the spare trainers, and I'm leaving. I'm still leaving some of some of them to catch our last Pokemon up to speed that we're gonna catch. Um, and again, we can't catch it until way later. I shouldn't say way later. We're actually getting close to being able to catch it, but um, it is kind of no annoying that it's a Pokemon that you can't catch until fairly late in the game um, because it's one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Alright, so we defeated the Rocket Executive. We stashed the real director in the underground warehouse. It's at the far end of the underground, but I doubt you'll get that far. So now we have the basement key. And if you noticed when we went into the underground before... Are we poisoned still? Okay, I thought it auto-healed us there for a second. So we don't have the key to get in there, there still. We need the card key for that. Wait, you don't mean... Oh, I don't know. You might be thinking what I'm thinking. You might be thinking what I'm thinking. Um, so, what does this lady say? I think she says something funny. Hello, I'm sorry, but we're not offering any tours today. <laughs> uh, no, you're not. I think my clap was just really loud, according to OBS here. Uh, let's see. So, what we gonna do? We gonna pop over here and we're gonna heal the squad. Um, it looks like, uh, we're kind of... I think I'm at a pretty good stopping point here for our stream. I will kind of get us over here. If you recall, there is a little area of the underground that we have not explored yet. Um, we have this kind of, like, long section where the Haircut Brothers are. Oh, I guess you can still get a haircut with the rockets there. Okay, that's good to know. Um, but yeah, you can only do one a day. But there's this little offshoot to the right. And before, what does it say? No entry beyond this point. And if you go here earlier in the game, you can't get in. But now, the basement key opened the door. Um, okay, so... We are about to get into more rocket stuff. Um, and this is, there's kind of like two distinct sections to the rocket stuff. There's what we just did, the, the initial radio tower stuff. Um, and then there's the stuff in the underground. I guess there's kind of like <laughs> kids trespassing, what's new? It's true, I'm just a degenerate. Um, but, uh, it's kind of split into three sections. It's really cool. I really like the way the Team Rocket episode works in this game. Uh, some people don't like it as much, but I really love it. Um, so this makes a pretty good stopping point today. Um, next time, we'll go ahead and finish up the Team Rocket episode. But thank you all for joining me so much. I'm so glad I was able to show off Smeargle. I love my boy Smeargle. Um, we were able to defeat Jasmine handily, um, and just have an overall rip snorting good time. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, again, thank you so much. You can subscribe, you can like, you can comment if you'd like. Um, that rhymed. Um, no, it didn't. It was just the same word. <laughs> um, you have a good weekend too, Tech. I am rambling. I will see you all next time, maybe Monday, Wednesday, somewhere around there. All right, kids. Peace out.